Hey Elevation Online, massive welcome to you. Thanks for joining us, so glad that you are here. My name is Isaac and I'm looking forward to together going through a great online experience that we have planned for you just coming up. But before we jump into that, I wanna give a special shout out to our Redlands and Gold Coast locations who had just popped into a snap lockdown. I wanna let you know that we're here for you, we're praying for you, we're believing with you. Uh, why don't you comment in the chat room below maybe something we could pray with you for uh, as we go through this snap lockdown together. But we do have a great online experience to come. We got a message from Pastor Kathy Abraham and I believe she's gonna bring the house down right where you are. So I hope you're ready with your notebook uh, to lean in and engage with that. But we're gonna have a great time of worship as well. So I wanna encourage you to ready your heart, to lean in. There's one thing I know about God is that He can still speak in the current situation that you're in. You might be in your lounge room, you might be uh, at the coffee table, uh, in your house, at the dining table as a family, however you're watching, in your bedroom, on your device, however you're watching, uh, would you come in with an expectant spirit ready to receive something from God today?
God, we just thank you so much. God, that we can come into this place and declare your praises, God. Shout your praise in this place. God, would you remind us, would you show us a little bit of who you are, God, of your character, God. How we can rely on you, we can sing to you. Come on, we sing.
worship you. We are going to continue to sing and pray and lift our voices to you this morning. Amen and amen. We're going to continue pressing in, pressing in further. Holy Spirit, pressing in further, going deep, searching you out this morning. Spirit sound, rushing wind, fire of God, full within, breath of God, breath on us, we pray. As we repent and turn from sin, revival in the smoldering breath of God, fan us into flame. We need a fresh wind, the fragrance of heaven, pour your spirit.
spirits of heaven, pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out, the holy anointing, the power of your your presence, presence. pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out.
Well, a big welcome to all of our locations today. It's such an honour and a privilege for me to be able to share with you um, to our Hills and our Penrith locations. Um, a big shout out to you. It's still being in lockdown and looks like it's extending. Um, but I hope today that I can share a word that will encourage you in this season to our Mandura, our Melbourne and Cairns locations. Um, it's just a great honour to be able to speak with you and share I believe what is a word from God for this season in our lives and especially in our church. Um, I want to talk to you today from the book of Ephesians. And Paul actually wrote the book of Ephesians as a book while he was in prison. So while he was in lockdown, God spoke to him about the church in Ephesus and they were in huge distraction mode. And so Paul, as he was in prison, the Spirit of God spoke to him so don't be disheartened by being in a lockdown. The Spirit of God spoke to him while he was in a prison cell and he actually wrote to the body of Christ in Ephesus. For those of you who don't know Paul and you could be listening for the first time, you might be even in the house of God for the first time today, Paul was a great guy. He was a very, very strong leader. He was an all or nothing kind of guy. He was 100% in or he was 100% out. So when he was 100% out, he was persecuting Christians with everything that he had. And when he got saved and radically his life got turned around, he became 100% for Christ. And he wrote a lot of the New Testament, a lot of the letters that we read in the Word of God today are written from Paul. And that is simply because the Spirit of God was using him in a mighty way. So don't despise your days of feeling like maybe you're in a prison cell in your own home because the Spirit of God can come and use us mightily even when we feel like pressure is all around us from every side. So this morning as we look at the book of Ephesians, and I want to just give an overall view of that book. It's a powerful book. It's probably one of my favorites. Is The first three chapters of the book of Ephesians, basically Paul is writing about thinking right. So he's in a prison cell. He's writing to the church in Ephesus. They are in a place where there is a lot of sin in the city. There is a lot of sinful distractions. Christians are being distracted. There is a lot going on. And so Paul had in his heart to write to this church. And so the whole letter, the whole book of Ephesians is basically telling Christians how you should be living. It's basically a download from God to him where he talked to the church about what God thought of them. So the first three chapters of Ephesians basically is talking about spiritual blessings. It's talking about being thankful and the power of prayer. It talks about being one in Christ. It talks about having grace. All of that is about how I need to think in my Christian walk. So he's writing this to the Ephesians. The last three chapters in the book of Ephesians is on how to live right. And so if you look at chapters four, five, and six, it talks about being in unity together as the church. There's a lot of disunity at that time. Not a lot has changed as history progresses. It talks about putting on a new life. It talks about walking in love. It talks about wives and husbands and respecting one another. It talks about children and parents. It talks about putting on the armor of God, all about how to live right. Okay, this is what got me. As you look at the book of a whole, and then when you go right to the very middle of that book, there is a really strange thing that happens that he does. Paul prays. So the first half of the book is about thinking right. The second half of the book is about living right. Ephesians 3.14. It's almost like I could see Paul writing and he puts his pen down and he stops. And I think he might have even had a Holy Spirit download because he stops and he said, for this reason, I bow my knees. For this reason, I bow my knees. This is what it says in the Message Bible, pretty similar to the ESV and all other versions. But I love the way it's put in the Message Bible because it's so easy to understand. My response with all that's going on in the church as I'm writing this letter to a, to a church who is in disunity, to a church who is being distracted by sin and the goings on of what is going outside the church and they're being swayed and their opinions are being, are being pushed off to the side simply because of what's going on outside. So he comes in and speaks a very strong word and then he stops and he goes, 
For this reason, I get down on my knees before the Father, this magnificent Father who parcels out heaven and earth, who parcels out not just the heavens but us on earth as well. For this reason, I get down on my knees and I ask him to strengthen you. Paul starts to pray right in the middle. Why would you put a prayer right in the middle of a book? Every other letter that is written, they usually pray before, bringing about, I thank God for you. I'm coming on God's behalf and here I am to write this letter. Or they put a prayer at the end. Why in the middle of a book would Paul bow, get down on his knees and say, I ask God to strengthen you by his spirit. He goes on to say this, I pray that it's not a brutal strength or not a brute strength, but a glorious inner strength. That's where the spirit of God lives. It's on the inside of Kathy Abraham. It's on the inside of leadership. It's on the inside of your person. I ask God to strengthen you at this time, an inner strength that only Christ will live in you. Listen to this, as you open the door and invite him in. Both feet planted firmly on love, you will be able to take in all Take in with all the followers of Jesus. So remember, he's writing to the church. He stops mid-sentence, mid-halfway in this book. He bows his knees and he said, I just feel that this church, they need that inner strength of the Holy Spirit at this time. You need more than just thinking right. You need more than just living right. Right bang in the middle. You need to know that you need the strength and the power of his spirit inside you to get through this season to be able to take in with all the followers the extravagant dimension of Christ's love. Then he says this, reach out, experience the breath, test its length, plumb the depth and rise to the heights, live full lives, full in the fullness of God. And then he just writes this, God actually can do anything you know and you do know that. Far more than you could ever imagine or guess, or request, even in your wildest dreams. He does it, not by pushing us around, but by working in us, his spirit deeply and gently within us. Can I tell you what the X factor is in our lives? Because I can spend my whole life trying to be Ephesians 1, 2, and 3 and think right. I can quote the scriptures. I can put it in my head for the day and literally in probably an hour, two hour, eight hours, 10 hours, all of a sudden there Kathy goes again, her thinking goes off. I, I get hurt, a, a, an opinion comes my way that challenges my thoughts. Every single day my thinking, I can try as hard as I can, but it is very hard to perfect my thinking. I can also try on this side, Ephesians 4, 5 and 6, to do all I possibly can to live right and to, to try my hardest in that arena of life but Paul said, you cannot think right or live right until you come to a place of surrender and I bow my knees. For this reason, for the church in Ephesus, I bow my knees. For this reason, for the church that, that, that I am leading, for the church that I get to oversee, for this reason, for INC, for our network of churches, I bow my knees. It's plural. You see, me getting down on one knee is very easy to get back up again, as you can see. It's not hard when I just bow one knee. I'm ready almost to get back up. But every version of this scripture says, I bow my knees before you. And I reach out for all the length and the depth that God has for me and I open that door to the Holy Spirit. And when I open that door and when I am in a place of surrender before him, that's when he can do far more than I can ever dream or imagine. And that's 
where the miraculous takes place. That's the beyond. Paul in his prison cell got down on his knees and he prayed for the strength of the church to be able to make it in this season and this time. And I believe he is saying the same today. There is a quote by Abraham Lincoln. It's powerful. I have been driven many times upon my knees by the overwhelming conviction that I had nowhere else to go. My own wisdom and that of all about me seemed insufficient for that day. The power of surrender, the power for this reason, I bow my knee. For this reason, I bow my knee. When attack comes, what do I do? I can try to live right, I can try to think right, but it's for this reason. I bow my knee. I come into a place, in my quiet place. I surrender my heart towards you, God. I give you these churches. I pray that by your spirit, the X factor, by your miraculous working power, that you will come again and that you will move like you have never moved before. Why? Because we bow our knee. We surrender. When we bow our knee and when we come to a place of surrender, God can then take us to the beyond. When we bow, he becomes able. When he is able, then we can ask. It's the power of opening that door. Empty hands, a place of surrender equals high hopes. I know that my God can work on my behalf, but he can only work when I stop trying to live right, when I stop trying to think right, and I come to a place of surrender and say, Father, I cannot do this day. I cannot do this life. I cannot lead in the fullness of what you want me to do unless I bow my knees and pray for your strength in my life. Can I ask you a question? What are you bowing your knees to? Are you bowing your knees to negativity? Are you bowing your knees to judgment? Are you bowing your knees to complaint? Are you bowing your knees to criticism? Are you bowing your knees to fighting in a marriage? Are you bowing your knees to control, trying to keep a grasp on the situation and not surrendering? It's in the place of surrender that God can truly move. You see, you have a seat in the government of God. Like a congressman, you represent a district. You speak on behalf of your family, your neighborhood, your sporting team maybe, your business, your work. Your sphere of influence is your region. And as you grow in faith, your district expands. And then God will start to burden you as you bow with a concern for other needs, for needy people, maybe orphans, maybe the homeless, maybe the lost, maybe disadvantaged. You start to respond then to these promptings and you pray. You get down on your knees and you open the door to his spirit to move. Father, they need your help. It actually isn't rocket science, it's prayer. It's just surrender. Acknowledging my inability and acknowledging God's ability. We come with empty hands, but with high hopes. You see, as followers of Jesus, we just can't walk in on a Sunday or watch online in the comfort of our lounge room and just tip our hat to Jesus and say, thank you very much. Jesus asks, for a bended knee. He asks for us to bow our knees. It is total surrender. Out of total surrender comes a miraculous. Out of total surrender comes the power of God. You are never more like Jesus than when you bend your knee and you start to pray for others. Pray for those you love and especially praying for those you don't love. Praying for the hurting, but especially praying for the ones that have hurt you. That's when we become like Jesus. That's when the power of surrender becomes so real. We actually then look like the bride of Christ, untainted, fresh, free. However, history repeats itself over and over again. And the reason Paul wrote to the Ephesians is because they were in disunity and distractions had come. The reason why we, we have the power of the church and all that it is, because again, we often look at the bride of Christ not unblemished, but we see the backbiting, we see the squabbling, we see the division, we see people hurt other people, 
and we get turned off church. We get turned off our bride. We walk away and we focus instead on not the bride of Christ and on not his church and not his people. We focus on ourselves and we start to build for ourselves. This actually happened in the Bible a long time ago as we jump from Ephesians back a long time when Israel was in exile in Babylon and they came out of Babylon and they walked back to Jerusalem and it was time to rebuild the ruins, to rebuild the temple of God. And they didn't. They got distracted yet again. They were, they'd come out of exile. God had done miracle after miracle. And yet they walked back in the door of freedom and of liberty and all they did was thought of themselves. The people had forgotten the miracles and they'd forgotten all the lessons that they had learned while they were in exile. They were working really hard, but their crops weren't, were failing. They were earning money, but it was never enough. So what happens? God said, I've got to speak to you. So again, instead of a Paul, he chose a prophet called Haggai. This is an interesting um, story because Haggai came at a time, and if you read the first chapter of Haggai, basically it's by summing it up, is they had returned to Jerusalem from exile in Babylon and the challenge was to rebuild the temple. Very similar to today, isn't it? They had begun the work, but somewhere along, there, along the way they had left the task. The temple was just not another building, especially in those days, or a church. It was actually considered a very holy place where sacrifices were made and people met with God. And it symbolised the nation's close relationship with God. So a shabby temple indicated a break in relationship with God. Can I say that again? A shabby temple indicated a break with a relationship with God. Something had gone wrong. The people were not on track. The people were distracted. And that's exactly what had happened. The people had built fine homes for themselves and left God's house in ruins. Their priorities, their values and God's people had got it completely wrong. Haggai comes in and in Haggai 2 chapter 1, this is what the prophet said to these people at this time. And I truly and honestly believe it's a word for the church right now in this season for where we are at. Interestingly enough, it was on the 21st day of the seventh month, which was last Wednesday. For me, on the 21st day of the seventh month, I was about to write a message and I had nothing. I texted my husband and I hadn't pressed send when a prophet in this church at the Gold Coast sent me a word. The word was Haggai 2 verse 1. I was about to press send to say to my husband, I've got nothing to say to all you beautiful locations. There's nothing in me at the moment. I don't want to just write any old message, but you can do it. You're great at this. They'll love hearing you anyway. I'm out. I don't want to do this message. I hadn't pressed send when this word on the 21st day of the seventh month came through on my phone. I read it. It floored me. It brought me to my knees. It brought the miraculous power of God back into my spirit to strengthen me, to be able to continue to lead, to continue to walk on, knowing that, you know what? God's got us and he is going to move mightily as we surrender. So on the 21st day of the seventh month, the word says this, speak to Zerubbabel. Governor of, Ju Governor of Judah, to Joshua, the high priest, and to the remnant of the people. Let me paraphrase that. Speak to basically the, le the leaders. Speak to the governor. Who's governing this thing? Speak to the sons. Speak to Joshua. Who's in leadership here? I'm speaking to pastors and leaders right now. You need to hear the word of God today. I believe it is a word for this church in this season as a whole, even for INC, speak to the governors, speak to the son, speak to the high priests. So all of those of you who are in leadership or in any kind of governing role right now, listen up. But also, let's go back to the church because there are a remnant of people that are still hanging around. So listen to the remnant of people. Listen, you leaders. Ask them, who of you is left who saw this house in its former glory. Think about that. How does it look to you now? Does it seem to you like nothing? 
and then the prophet comes. But now, be strong, declares the Lord. Be strong, Joshua. Be strong, all you people of the land. And work, declares the Lord Almighty. This is what I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt. So he's talking to these people who have disregarded the temple, talking to these people who have built fine homes for themselves. They've stopped bending their knees and they've come to a place where it's all too hard. It's easier to sit in a lounge room. It's easier not to get involved. It's easier not to serve anymore. I'm not sure what is left of the church anyway after this season where COVID has just ripped into our faith and our hearts. It is a time, declares the Lord, I know what's going on. But those of you who are left, Listen, be strong and work. This is what I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, Egypt, Egypt and my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. In a little while, in a little while, I will once more shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land and I will shake all nations. What is desired by all nations will come and I will fill this house with the glory, says the Lord. The silver is mine. Oh, yes, it is. The gold is mine. Oh, yes, it is, declares the Lord. The glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former house, declares the Lord Almighty. And in this place, in this place at Hills, in this place at Penrith, in this place at Mandura, in this place in Cairns, in this place in Melbourne, in this place at GC where I am standing right now, in this place in INC, I will grant peace, declares the Lord. Amen and amen. A word from God for our church in this season. Do not be distracted. Come to a place where you surrender, where you bow your knees and understand that we are in this together. We fight together. We fight in unity. We do not fight in disunity. We are like a battleship about to go to war. I have a picture of one here on the screen. And God has enlisted us in this Navy and he has placed us on his ship, the boat, and it has one purpose to carry us safely to shore. It's not a cruise ship, it's a battleship. We aren't called to a life of leisure. We are called to a life of service. Each of us having a different task. Some are concerned with those who are drowning and they're snatching people from the water. Others are occupied with the enemy. So they man the canons of prayer and of worship. And wow, we love those people. And still others are devoted themselves to the crew, feeding and training the crew members. Though different, we are the same. Each can tell of a personal encounter with our captain for each has received a personal call he found us along the seaport and he invited us to follow him. Though the battle is fierce, the boat is safe for our captain is God. The ship will not sink for that there is no concern. There is only concern, however, regarding the disharmony of the crew. Unity creates belief. Disunity focuses on disbelief. Who wants to board a ship of bickering sailors? You see, life on the ocean can be rough, but the waves will never be the ones that will attack us. Could it be today that as we bring our, our, our lives and our hearts in a place of surrender, where we bow our knees to our Father, where He strengthens us in His Spirit, as we open the door to all that he has for us, which is the miraculous, which is on this other side. Even when we are in lockdown, Paul got a download from the Spirit of God for the church. Can I ask you today to get back on our knees to stop complaining and bickering and causing disunity, but to board the battleship again, to ride the waves knowing that we are safe, 
that we would not fight from within, but we would come together unified as one people with one cause call, and that is to rebuild our temples in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray. Father, today I put out the call to build our temple. I put out the call that we would build the temple of God on the inside of us, that we would surrender. Because in all of our trying to live and to think right, unless we bow our knees and surrender to you, only you can build the house of God. Only you can build your church. Only you can build your bride. But it comes from our hearts surrendering to you. Father, I pray today that we would sign up and that we jump on board on this battleship once again, where some have jumped off, where some have been the, 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 the pain of other crew members. Father, we repent today and we come before you and we, we offer again our lives as a living sacrifice for your service that we would get to the other side, to the other side of, of where you what you have for us, of our destinies in you and of our destinies in the house of God and this church and that this battleship will make it safely to shore with every crew member fulfilling the call of God on their life in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen and Amen. Love you guys and we will see you soon. Hey, what a great message and thought from our lead pastor, Kathy Abraham. Jesus is our first. You know, I think it's such a timely message, such a timely truth and a promise we can hold on to in this current climate that the, this house, that the future's still bright, that there's a greater tomorrow. So I want to encourage you to lean into that with hope, hold on to that this week with hope, pray into that this week, uh, that there is a great future ahead of us for elevation. I also want to give an opportunity and recognize maybe you're watching throughout this experience and you said, hey, Isaac, I want to make a decision to follow Jesus. I want relationship with Jesus, then friend, what I'd love to do is simply lead you in a prayer. I'll give you some action steps at the end of it, but right now, would you just pause and would you engage with me? If that's you, you say, I want relationship with Jesus. Would you just close your eyes right now and we're gonna say this prayer together. Just repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I give you my life. One more time. Dear Jesus, I give you my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, if you did say that personally, I want to congratulate you. I want to celebrate with you. But also, we as Elevation are so pumped for this journey with you. What we'd love for you to do is just comment your name in the chat room below. Just say, hey, I made that decision. I said that prayer. We have teams who are ready to celebrate with you. I want to support you. I want to party with you in this decision that you have made. But if you could do that, that would be absolutely amazing. Hey, we're almost done for our gathering today. But before I leave, just wanna thank you so much for your generosity. I wanna encourage you to, to continue to lean in with the spirit of generosity. And as we do that and bring God our first in the area of our finance, and we attach faith to it, we believe wholeheartedly that God can really do the impossible. So the ways that you can give are on the screen below me. I wanna encourage you in that and thank you for your generosity. Uh, just before we say goodbye, again, I wanna let you know that we're praying for you, that we're believing uh, for God to do incredible things through you throughout this time. And if you need anything at all, you need prayer, you need uh, just to reach out and chat to someone, you can follow us on our social media accounts, DM us there, or even comment in the chat room below, request prayer. We would love to be able to support you during this time. We well, hope you have a great rest of your day. We cannot wait to see you next time.